Milk, cheese, yogurt, ice cream. Dairy is an American staple. It's beloved by many and harms us all. Why, you might say? The government and dairy industry is hiding those important answers behind flashy propaganda. As we have learned about social activism in protesting class, we must all question the status quo. It is time to rip the blindfold off and expose the injustice that the government and dairy industry has caused for its animals, farm workers, the environment, and the health of the country's citizens. The dairy industry has been reviewed and researched from the inside out. Researchers understand that the byproduct of these abused cows being pumped with various hormones and antibiotics have detrimental effects on the human body and environment. Research has been conducted following a population that consumes dairy for 40 plus years and the health effects that arise, as well as the antibiotic effects on humans from the cow's dairy linked to type 1 diabetes, prostate, ovarian, and breast cancer. Both my contribution to this conversation is exposing information that the public is not aware of in order for those viewing this documentary to be informative consumers. Similarly to pink washing, dairy too has been washed up into the label of healthy, bone building, and a great cool drink to consume. When consumers see popular got milk campaigns or bone building calcium on the label of the milk jug, they automatically associate milk with neat athletes and celebrities and loads of health benefits. Many articles and books have labeled this dairy epidemic as a white Also covering and exposing the hidden atrocities with respect to animal and worker well-being, as well as the environment, we will also be uncovering why exactly the government endorses dairy so dearly when modern science has proved that there are no beneficial effects by consuming dairy. Why have nutrition guides been completely whitewashed? Let's find out. Stop at analyzing this completely corrupt industry is understanding how they are completely cruel to dairy cows. The dairy industry has abused cows for decades, trapping them into disgusting farms, exposing them to disease, inseminating them taking away their calves and pumping them full of hormones and antibiotics. The life expectancy of cows should be 25 to 30 years, but unfortunately, in modern dairy factory farms, they live as little as four to five years. On their way to these barns, most cattle are forced to endure the agony of long distance transport. Current federal legislation stipulates that it's legal to transport food animals anywhere from 36 to 52 hours without water, food, or a rest stop. Upon arriving at these industrialized barns, cattle are crammed together in confined areas or cages without access to sunlight, fresh air, or open pasture. These densely populated barns lead to extremely quick spread of disease and the overuse of antibiotics. These antibiotics typically end up in your own milk. The increased milk production spurred by dosing cows with Monsanto's Pulsilac causes them to suffer from mastesis, a bacterial infection of the udder and widespread occurrences of cystic ovaries and disorders of the uterus. In addition to harming the cows, these conditions may produce discharges that are passed on to consumers' milk. With hormones and insemination, these cows are constantly kept in a pregnant state. The milk is designed to quickly turn a little calf into a big cow and contains 60 different hormones, most designed to boost growth. These baby calves are ripped away from their mothers and if male, are sold into the veal industry. Another major issue with dairy industrialization is the way workers are being treated and what they are exposed to. One worker in Idaho had his tractor tip over, submerging the Mexican native under several feet of a loose, thick, somewhat liquid-like substance, according to the police report documenting his death in southern Idaho. Munoz, 
whose body was later retrieved by the fire department, died of traumatic asphyxiation. Despite injury rates far exceeding other industries, the agriculture industry receives relatively light federal oversight of worker safety. Regulations established when farms were more likely to be small, family operations having kept up with rapidly consolidating industry. Historically, the U.S. Department of Labor's Occupational Safety and Health Administration, otherwise known as OSHA, has taken a hands-off approach, conducting inspections when there is only a report of a serious accident or fatality. The only repercussions of these awful incidents is the farm paying a fine of $5,000. And if they're under 11 employees, the farm does not even have to report such incidences. Dairy is not compatible with the human body. The Department of Agriculture's recommendation for dairy is a mere three cups daily and still one and a half pounds by weight for every man, woman, and child over the age of nine. This in a country where as many as 50 million people are lactose intolerant, including 90% of all Asian Americans and 75% of all African Americans, Mexican Americans, and Jews. The government, the government site advises one should switch to low-fat milk to be health conscious. However, that is also not a great idea. Neil Bernard, president of the Physical Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine, stated, not only is it an issue with these diseases, but many others as well. 50 years ago, the incidence of breast cancer risk among U.S. women was 1 in 20, a percentage that was grown to 1 in 8 women as of 2001. The United Nation refuses to believe that our BGH hormone is safe for human consumption. Even the WTO, or more specifically, its food standards body, the Codex Alimentaris, has refused to endorse Monsanto's claim that both our BGH is safe for use in the dairy supply. Additionally, the government enforcing all public schools to have children consume milk with lunch is adding to the obesity epidemic in America. There are 27 grams of sugar in 8 ounces of Coca-Cola and a whopping 30 grams of sugar in 8 ounces of Nestle chocolate milk. Sugar is sugar and drives obesity and diabetes. It is not a good way to get kids to drink milk. Furthermore, the false notion that dairy helps one's bone is instilled in the public's mind, but it is simply not true. In a large meta-analysis, milk did not reduce risk of fractures. Other studies have shown it can increase fracture rates. And the countries with lowest milk consumption have the lowest risk of osteoporosis and fractures. Daniel Ludwig of Boston Children's Hospital stated, bone fracture rates tend to be lower in countries that do not consume milk compared with those that do. The evidence extends to adults, he noted. Adequate calcium is available from much less unhealthy sources, including leafy greens, seafood, and fruit. Why do we not question the nutrition that our own government advises us to take action on? Why has all of this research been discovered, but the public is not even aware of it? It is simply because of the government desires for America and the propaganda around dairy. It is common that the government wants us to believe that they have the public's best interests in mind, but actually, the making a profit is one of their most important aspects. The federal government mandates the collection of industry fees for checkoff programs. The U.S. Supreme Court has upheld the legality of the checkoff programs as government speech, finding the message is controlled by the federal government. The funds from these checkoff programs are supposed to be put towards marketing efforts, but the program gives a huge boost to fast food chains. Domino's alone benefited from a $35 million partnership with the dairy checkoff program, resulting in the company adding more cheese with the pizza makers following their lead. Regarding schools, the dairy industry, with a government assist, is heavily promoting chocolate and other sugar milks 
to school children. For example, the USDA's milk checkoff program promotes chocolate milk has muscle and raise your hand for chocolate milk campaigns to defend chocolate milk. This, however, leads to obesity and diabetes since a small chocolate milk has well over 25 grams of sugar and loads of saturated fat. Which are contributing to the diseases our federal government is allegedly trying to prevent. Andy Bellotti is a registered dietitian who contributed to the report by calling out many misleading health claims made by the dairy industry. He says, I hope with the points made in this film, one can understand why the dairy industry is incredibly corrupt. We need to say no to milk. We do not want to fill our bodies with horrible antibiotics, hormones, carcinogens. We do not want to support the abuse of animals and horrible working conditions and fall for the flashy propaganda the government is feeding all of us through media. So going forward, nobody's got milk. We need to think of other options and save our bodies, our fellow people, and our animals. Let's bring this corruption to an end.